Oh goodness, Kane. Hello, plant people. How are you guys doing today? If you're new to this channel, my name is Ashley and I'm a soil scientist. This is not my usual intro, but I made a video that was like 30 minutes long. Had to cut that in half. So this is the second half of it where I go into growing degree days and just kind of the terminology more so, not so much the math and how you can grow extreme temperature crops in Canada if you just change or control some factors. So let's just jump straight into it. But one thing you'll notice and what I find really irritating is on the back, it'll say days to maturity. And this one says for lupa, it's only 55 to 70 days. Like that's irritating because it's not 55 to 75 days. Um, this one, no, it doesn't even have the number of growing degree days. It just says start indoors early. So what does that mean? Like what does days to maturity on this label mean? Because all these companies do it. So like this one, for example, says 75 days. Um, tomatoes will say, this one says 90 days. Uh, tomatoes will say 90 days. Pumpkins will say 100 days. Like what exactly does that mean? And the term ultimately is misleading. So hear me out. A tomato or a pumpkin will say 110 growing degree days, but we all know that pumpkin patches in Saskatchewan aren't planting seedlings outdoors. They're directly sowing seeds in the ground. So why is that 120 days started outdoors yielding a harvest, but then the stupid watermelons that have 120 growing degree days or 100 in 20 days to harvest why aren't those yielding a harvest when they're directly sown in the ground or for that matter why did tomatoes not yield a harvest when it's only 90 days to grow and it comes down to something really basic that the gardening world just has not yet capitalized on and it's something we call growing degree days so I know that sounds really intimidating. So growing degree days is different than days to maturity. Days of maturity is the number of days it takes for that plant to mature once it's planted outdoors, AKA it's planted outdoors, but then on top of that, it has to be planted outdoors in conditions that are equal to or relevant to the growing degree days of that plant. So I'm going to pop up throughout this entire conversation as I'm talking footage of me actually calculating this out here on my iPad just to give you guys a little bit of an idea. Now, if you want me to do an entire math class on this, please let me know in the comments down below. I will do your math class for you. I have no issues with that. I just don't want to include it in this video. So I've written this out in super basic terms, so I don't just don't get too sciencey on you. So growing degree days is something that scientists use to explain the number of units needed to get a harvest from a plant. And every plant has a different number of growing degree days required. Now, I would love to say you can just easily Google growing degree days for a tomato and it will pop up. The unfortunate story to that is that a majority of times when you say growing and tomato in the same Google search, it's going to bring up a blog post about gardening and none of it is going to reference the actual scientific literature on growing degree days. Now I could make a blog post and if you guys are interested in that, I can do it. That will list out the growing degree units, green, growing degree day units needed for a plant, but ultimately it just isn't a quick find and it will take some searching to discover. So growing degree days is based on when it is outdoors, not inside. So even if you were to start a gourd, or even if you were to start a watermelon indoors, it doesn't start transferring to growing degree days until it's in the soil outdoors. And I know that seems weird, but we'll talk about why that is here in a little bit. So from the time it's transplanted outdoors or from the time it is placed in the ground outdoors. So for example, those pumpkin seeds, from the time they get put in the soil, the growing degree day clock 
start. So there are a number of factors that affect the growing degree days or the growing degree day units you get. Now, I find it misleading that they call it growing degree days because it has nothing to do with the number of days in our summer. It has to do with a conglomerate of different factors. So for example, things like temperature and hours of sun are going to affect how many growing degree day units you get in a day. Factors that won't necessarily benefit but will just take away from the number of growing degree day units you get are things like stress. So pest outbreaks, potentially being trampled, um, walking on the soil and compacting the soil around it, all these factors that cause stress actually take away from the total growing degree day units you can accumulate in a summer. So total contribution means that the temperature, the light minus the stress factor will give you your total units. And this isn't a whole number every single day. You can get 10 growing degree, growing degree days from a day. You can also get 12.5 you know, units that day, or you could end up with zero units on a day, but you can never technically go negative. You can only just get zero, which means that nothing is happening. The way it's calculating, calculating this is high temperature. So the temp high for that day, morning and day and night, you would take the, the highest temperature and you're going to add it to your lowest temperature of the day. So the high day time high, so the day's high and the day's low. Then you're going to divide that by two, minus it from the base temperature requirement for that plant. Again, I'll do a separate video on this if you want. So for example, with a tomato, I wrote it down here. A tomato requires a grand total of 1,300 growing degree day units. You notice how there's not 1,300 days in a year? I know. It's like a game. <laughs> so the game, the game, the purpose of the game is to grab as many units as you can every single day for the growing period and then hope you can get to the sum of 1,300 because once you get to the sum of 1,300, that means the plant is at maturity and it's going to flower and then set tomatoes. <laughs> So for example, if we can hit 1300 growing degree day units early in the season, we technically will have an earlier harvest. So we'll have an earlier harvest for that tomato. Now, if our growing degree day units take longer to get to 1300, we'll have a harvest that's later in the year. So for example, some of you may have or may keep a plant journal because you buy my plant journal growing. <laughs> my growing plant journal. So my, my journal, for example, that I have, Amazon or Etsy, um, I like to track when I start my plants. So I have a, a, a plant tracker for the day, the start dates for my seeds. So I haven't started any seeds yet, but this is kind of what it looks like. And in it, I will put my start dates. And I'll always notice that then when I go to track my harvest, because I also have a harvest tracker, when I track my harvest, it varies it's never the same it'll be 120 days one year and it'll be 100 100 days the next and what it comes down to is those growing degree days so it comes down to the daytime highs the daytime lows the amount of sun that plant has gotten all these different factors will ultimately affect your number of units you collect in a day so with that being said if a plant has a um, for example, a watermelon that has 120 growing degree days. You start it indoors because you know you don't have 120 growing degree days in your summer. So you start it indoors, you transplant it outside, but you still never get to the fruiting stage. The reason for this isn't the light, it's not the number of days, it's actually the heat or potentially the stress. So if you don't get enough heat, meaning that base temperature requirement for that plant, whatever it may be at, say it's at the base temperature requirement is 25 degrees Celsius, for every single day that your daytime low goes below 25, you're losing growing degree days. So you may be zeroing out 
five, six, seven times in that entire span, of that entire period, and therefore you don't end up anywhere near where you need to be despite the fact that you literally counted out 120 days and your calendar told you you're harvesting watermelons in June. Get what I'm saying? So for example, with a pumpkin that has the same number of days, 120, but you still get the pumpkin. You still end up with the pumpkin. And the reason for this is, it, despite the fact that you started it outdoors in the ground, the reason for this is because that base temperature in the formula is lower. So the base temperature requirement for a pumpkin may only be 15 degrees Celsius, meaning so long as your daytime lows are above 15, you're not gonna be zeroing out a whole bunch of times. You're probably gonna hit all 120 days, right? So you may be wondering, well, if I start them indoors, I have them at room temperature, why would the plant still not do well? And ultimately it comes down to factors of stress, transplant, indoor temperatures, and just the natural intensity of light indoors. For whatever reason, mother nature is smart and the clock really does not start ticking on a lot of these things until it's planted outdoors. One thing people will notice if they try to hydroponically grow watermelons, for example, is the fruits will be small and they are gonna go way past 120 days because it needs to accumulate the number of units. And for someone in California, this isn't a big deal because your growing degree days don't matter. You will eventually accumulate enough units in the game to be able to harvest the pumpkin. It doesn't matter. But in Canada, we have a clock on us. And so we need to ensure that our heat, our sunlight, and our stress factors are all aligned. So if you're growing a gourd, for example, like I want to try to do again because I'm crazy, you need to change the game. You need to change the abiotic factors of the game to ultimately change the days in which you're growing. You need to accumulate more units per day. So the best way to do this is to plant the plant in a container. This is gonna give you warmer soil, for example, especially if you have plants such as loofahs that have a base growing temperature that is incredibly high compared to the nighttime lows that we experience here in Canada. So a raised container. Another factor is potentially covering at night all the way into the middle of July. So long as your growing degree days are up, you are good to go. So having some sort of a temperature gauge in and around that plant and really controlling that plant's micro environment is really gonna help you guys succeed here. The next stage is to reduce stress. So you're going to be covering this plant at night, you're going to be potting it into a pot, you're gonna make sure it never ever runs out of water, it's gonna be fully watered at all times. You really wanna reduce things like fungal attacks, bug attacks, all that stuff, because as you get those stressors, you end up losing total units. Now there's no direct formula to calculate units lost by stress. It's kind of just something we know happens as scientists, but ultimately those are the things you need to do to achieve success in this is what it comes down to. So my message to you in this video, and I will do, I'm just thinking, I'm just, freaking do the formula version of this right after but the uh the root of all this the whole kit and caboodle of what's happening here is you want to grow plants that are outside the scope the best way to determine if it's in your scope is to look at the base temperature requirement for that plant and then look up your average temperature for your area in the summertime. So average temperature of Saskatoon, Saskatchewan, June through August. And it's gonna give you an average. And this is gonna give you a good idea. If your average temperature for your area is below the base temperature requirement for that plant, you know then that you have to put in a lot of extra work in order to get that plant to eventually mature. You have to do everything in your power to achieve the accumulation of units needed for maturity. I hope I didn't confuse you guys. If I did, I really do apologize. If you guys want like a base temp uh, growing degree day chart over on the website, let me know. I will put the work in to do that for you. If it's a resource you're going to use, 
I have no issue getting that to you. If it's gonna benefit you, I want you to succeed. I don't want you to feel discouraged. As well, it may help you reflect on some plant choices you've made in the past and make you feel not so bad about it. Say you've tried to grow loofahs and they've failed epically. Once you see the base temperature of a loofah, you're gonna be like, oh duh. <laughs> I don't even think my nights stay that hot ever. Just to, just to keep in mind. So I want to thank you guys so much for watching. I know, like I said, I was pretty hairy carry here today, but I will talk to you guys next time. Bye.